you've got to change your perspective and do what you can do. And it reminds me of a quote by Edward Everett Hale. He was a Unitarian theologian, um, lived most of his life in, in the 1800s. And he said, I am only one, but still I am one. I can't do everything, but still I can do something. And because I can't do everything, I refuse to not do the something that I can do. All right, welcome to the Sales Wolf Podcast 162. I'm your host, Joseph Caldwell. Special guest, Jacob Gaspard, here with me today. And we are the Sales Wolves. Our- All right, episode 162. We got his wife over here, Brandy. She's laughing at us. <laughs> She's laughing at our howl. I don't understand. But, uh, but man, this is episode 162. This has been a fun, fun journey. And my special guest here, Jacob, he, uh, he we're going to get into his background and where he comes from and, and where he hails from. But um, to, to let you guys know why he's here, any time that we do a boot camp and we have a new group of, of, of agents starting with us that sell life insurance, we, um, we do a sales wolf competition. And, and it, it's, it's, they're running from out the gate and whoever is the top at the end of the competition they are the sales wolf for that boot camp and that was jacob which he done he he done (laughs) he did an unbelievable job and um and has just come out the gate swinging and and has has utilized every aspect of our system and so proud of him but i wanted to have him on the podcast today and and just to learn a little bit from him, learn a, learn a little bit more about him, and uh, and what's happened over the past uh, past few months. What what was your start date? Uh, September 29th or something like September that. September 29th. 29th and um, and had you ever been in life insurance before? Never. You ever been in sales before, like uh, the traditional sales? Um, no. So, um, what's the background? Background is um, I was in construction specifically electrical contracting and with a I guess a specialty in sports lighting okay so there was a sales aspect of that sure. um, but it wasn't it was far and few between you know one job may last a year so there's not uh, very many sales that um, that you have to call on with that right so not your typical sales position definitely not how we how we not at all right <laughs> so very different what was your background before that oil field oil yeah so i worked in oil field um in the supply part of it and then um i guess with that um i played music for 20 years so so you used to being on stage being on stage what'd you play yeah. so i played uh cajun accordion <laughs> so we, we could what get in into the that. hell is that <laughs> <laughs> so um you'll have to google that because I, I don't think i could go into an explanation to um, actually explain it um but you could YouTube that if you need to look at it. Then I played guitar, lead guitar, bass guitar, and drums. Mm-hmm. Uh, drums being probably the uh, best, most fun instrument that I played. Right. But um, being the, and then I sang, so I didn't have the option to play the drums in the band. So I had to be the front man. So that was uh, one of the things that I did for the 20 years. And of course, now I, I, it's been, what, six years since I haven't been on stage uh with my band and i go sit in with other people and do the the drums and just have fun with it yeah so that that's that's pretty much the background that's cool man so so not a big background in sales no so so as you were getting started um and and this will help people that uh, are building a sales team or or are a part of a company culture now or trying to develop a company culture. Just tell me your experience as you were getting started. What you what you saw, what you saw in our organization, and and what drew you to us, and then um, and then what's kept you here, and what what's what's helped you become a um, high high performer. Okay, so my experience here was uh, 
thing that drew me was the leadership. You know, <laughs> I saw that right off the bat, and it was, um, it was, it was driven with such a support that I can't even explain. Like it's hard to even put into words. So it was. It was a lot of that, of course, you know, the, the systems that companies put in place is key, you know, key. Mm -hmm. Those systems and the support, you know. So, I mean, any time that I could pick up the phone and someone answers that phone, when I'm in trouble, you know, or not not real trouble, but, you know, if I got a question. Right, right. When that phone answers and somebody can answer my question, that's that's key. Like, I mean, right. that, that's key. That, that takes away so much pressure on my part. And, um, I don't know, that was one of the biggest things that drew me here. Now with staying here, um, man, I don't, it's addicting. Yeah. That, that's all I can say. Like doing what we do and especially insurance sales, um, it's so different than anything I've ever done before. So mm -hmm. that was like a challenge to myself. Um, I was like, okay, I need to figure this out. I need to do this. You know, this is not easy. Right. And then the more it went, it was like, okay, so how, how much can I do? You know, you know, I sold yeah. 10 in a day. Can I, can I do 20? You know, and then I don't even know how much I do now. You know? Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a great lesson for people too. When, <clears throat> whenever they're getting started in a new type of sales, nobody's good at anything to begin with, especially if you've never done it. Or maybe you did something similar, but you can rest assured that you won't be good at the new thing. It takes practice. It take. I mean, there's a football and a basketball. Just because you were a superstar at one, and they're both balls, they're right. both games played like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, but but that doesn't translate. And so a lot of times people will people will have some success in a certain type of sales. Um, and it was probably better that you had no background. In Absolutely. It. Uh, cause you were a clean slate. You weren't resting on the laurels of a success in the past, thinking that the same thought process that got you there would get you here. Yeah. And that's a, that's for a lot of people watching, especially in these tumultuous times with, with the COVID virus, with, with shutdowns and, and business interruption. Um, there'll be massive layoffs. There'll be people that change careers. There'll be people that have never been in sales that go towards that route. Um, there'll be people that were in one type of sales, but that industry has gone away and, and you'll have to move a different direction. And, and it's literally, it's literally like starting from the beginning and go to the basics. Yeah. Um, and that's what we, that's what we always, uh, preach here. Um, but somebody that, that, is a part of a sales group you don't have to be the leader to develop a great company culture right right um one where people support each other and 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 one thing that i see in sales is is you have somebody that does pretty well but they're stingy with the information you may have somebody that's struggling or that or that is good at one aspect but you're better at this and 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 it was funny, we just talked to a gentleman a few minutes ago that, um, the, and I didn't know you did that. I didn't know that you reached out to him and you spent the time with, you don't make any money from him, do you? No, absolutely not. Not, not one credit from a sale that he does. If he feeds his family or not, it has zero impact on your family. Right. So why'd you do that? Why'd you help him? Why'd you reach out? Why'd you spend your time doing that? Man, that's is the right thing to do. Huh. It's just the right thing to do. You know, when you're in a situation, and I've been there before, where you just feel lost. You feel you don't know what you're doing. I mean, hell, I still feel like I don't know what I'm doing. But I know I've walked some of those trails that he's about to walk on. Right. So I want to I want to leave something. I want to flash a light. I want to do something so he can see he can still make it. That's like right. There, there's a way. There's a yep. way here. So, I mean, that's that's just what it is. I mean, you didn't have to give me an opportunity, you know, but you did. You well, know, I voted so, against you. So <laughs> I'm just well, kidding. <laughs> well, I'm still here. So, you know, <laughs> but, but, but that, I'm kidding, no, <laughs> well, that's, that's the reason why. I mean, that's just, that's my heart is to mm -hmm. always help people who, who need, and if I have something that I could give, I'm going to give it. And at right. that point, I, is 
you know, was information. It was mm-hmm. it was insights uh, to things that were going on in in my state that he was coming in. You know, which right. I lived my entire life there, yeah. so I knew a few things about it, and then of course things about the business that um, you know were vital to him right. that he needed to know. You know, yep. so and for whatever reason, you know, um, he trusted me with that. So. You know, I, I think he's doing pretty well because of it. So yep. it's just the right thing to do. You know what? For people listening, what you're hearing is that community mindset. And culture is a buzzword in corporate America. And everybody wants a, 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 a phenomenal culture. But, but what we're here to say, I'm so glad you brought that up. You will never have the culture on your sales team. Um, you'll never have the culture... Even even if you're out there all alone, you'll never have that type of culture until you become it. Until you become it, it will never surround you. Until you change you, it'll never show up outside of you. And, and so that's what Jacob is talking about. That's so valuable, especially in the times that we're going through now, right? Community's never been more important. I get it. Social distancing, wash your hands more, use hand sanitizer, take precautions, all of that stuff. I get it. There's shutdowns everywhere. But I'll give you an example of community. Um, one of our agents, I was on the phone with him yesterday, and he said, he said, man, thank God we're in an industry where we, where we can continue to work, where we can continue to make something happen. Um, he said, my brother is in the restaurant business and they just shut his restaurant down for the next 60 days. Man, that's a restaurant economy killer. So all the restaurants in our areas are shut down. And I thought, oh my gosh. It reminded me of, of one of my first sales jobs in Connecticut. And, and my office was in West Hartford. It's a Jewish community. And I learned something really valuable there that I had forgotten until he said, until he told me about his brother. I learned something super valuable. Um, my office was in the in the basement of this office building. On the next floor up, it was on Main Street, and there was a Jewish deli there. And I would have lunch there sometimes, and I would listen to to the older Jewish men that owned different businesses in the community. You know what I learned from them? I learned that a dollar flipped seven times before it left their community. Seven. So the tire guy, if he needed legal work, he went to the, to the, to the, wow. to the, le- and the legal guy, if he needed, if he needed, you know, uh, mechanic work, he went to the, this guy. If, if, if they needed cleaning, they went to the clean seven times it would flip. And I went, oh my gosh, the lesson comes full circle yesterday. And, and, and I, I called, I called the agent and I said, Hey, is your, does your brother, um, are they doing to go? orders are they still keeping the kitchen open and serving on to go side and because i know the restaurant business is tough yeah it is tough 80 percent of restaurants are no more than one two three weeks from closing their doors and they've got to close them for 60 days yeah you're talking about when times are good when times are good when times are good that's where they are that's a hard business and, and I, I talked to my wife last night, and I said, man, call that restaurant up. If they're doing to-go orders, we're making a big-ass to-go order tonight. That's how we're eating tonight. And, and you, tell them, you tell them that, that, that you tell Jimmy who owns it that, that, that his brother sent us, and, and we support them, and we want to see them make it, and we're going to make more to-go orders. If I'm going to spend money on food, then spend it in your community. I learned that lesson, but why did I forget it? Yeah, Man, this is the time... You, you want to uh, you want to raise head and shoulders above the crowd, right? I can promise you this. I'm not doing it for this reason, but I can tell you if Jimmy needed life insurance, I know where he's going. I know where he's going. Right. It's a community. Man, get involved in your community. That's what creates a culture <clears throat> in you and around you, right, where you look out for people, you cheer for people, you root people on. Um, and so, man, I applaud you for doing that. And that speaks to your success. That speaks to your success because as, as you treat others, others will treat you. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I think that's some kind of golden rule or something in some book somewhere. Um, 
I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of it. <laughs> do unto something as they do something, you know. Famous guy said it. <laughs> famous dude a couple thousand years ago. He probably knew what he was talking about. Um, yeah. Go ahead. What you know, getting ready to well, a, a quote comes to mind in a, that I just read in a book, and it says, responsibility is taken, not given. <laughs> and, man, these times right here, that's, that's vital. Because, you know, j- just like that, you know, I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't help the guy for anything other than to help him. And I felt, you know, I needed to be responsible to do that. And just like you're talking about what you did with that restaurant, you know, you took responsibility to go. You didn't wait for him to give you the opportunity right. to say, hey, I'm, I am doing to go orders and you could get it. No, you, you questioned it. You did it. You took the responsibility, to, the initiative to do it. And I think especially in these times, we all need to do that. We need to do that with our families. We need to do it, especially, you know, with the economy, you know, in our communities and work. We we need to do the things that we need to do. Um, And, you know, for people who are shutting down, you know, just like the to-go orders, they may have, I I don't know if they did that before or not, but uh, whatever job that you're doing, whatever business you have, you need to take that response responsibility and do it because everything that you've done thus far, it's not going to work right now. Right. You know, I mean, the, the country is not operating the same, but you can still operate. There's something yep. that you can do. That's right. Um, you just got to be creative and do it different and, you know, take the risk, take the leap. Something needs to change, you know, that's right. That's right. And you'll stand head and shoulders above, so-called competitors that are hiding in the bushes and watching right now yes you continue to reach out you continue every single challenge and no matter how big the challenge is there is hidden within it the exact same level of opportunity or greater those seeds are there you just have to shift that perspective yeah and and there's so many people saying well i can't do i can't do i can't do well, hell, you can't control the can't. So control the can. Absolutely. Figure out what you can do. Figure out what you can do. If you're locked out of businesses, they won't let you in there, and you're selling to those businesses, guess what? Start writing handwritten notes to the owners. Start writing. You can do that. Tell them you're pulling for them. Tell them, tell them hey, I know this is a tough time. Man, I, my heart goes out to you. I hope you make it. If there's anything I can do, if there's anything I can do, you let me know, right? Yep. Those are going to be the people that stand head and shoulders above everything else because they actually care about the relationships around them. Yep. And relationships are key. Relationships, a solid relationship, man, it's never forged in the good times. Never. (laughs) No. Man, heroes are never born during peacetime. They're born in battle. They're born in war. Man, so I would encourage everybody that's seeing this to control the controllables. Do what you can do. Be positive. Drop text to people. Drop notes to people. Help your neighbor. Man, look out for the elderly. Do what you can do. And and you will come out of this, man, with your hair on fire. You'll come out of this in a greater economic position than you've ever been in your life. Because other people are holing up, quitting, rolling over, man, just demoralized. You've got to change your perspective and do what you can do. And it reminds me of a quote by Edward Everett Hale. He was a Unitarian theologian, um, lived most of his life in, in the 1800s. And he said, I am only one, but still I am one. I can't do everything but still I can do something. And because I can't do everything, I refuse to not do the something that I can do. Yeah, Isn't that powerful? Absolutely. That's responsibility. That's what you're talking about. And I heard somebody break it down. I can't remember if it was in uh, um, the book we're reading, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I think it was in there. But it took the word responsibility And it looked at it backward, the ability to respond. And if you have the ability 
to respond, to do, then it is your responsibility to do it. Isn't that crazy? Absolutely. I love it, man. But uh, I'm telling you, man, I am proud of you, and I'm excited to uh, to build this and do this journey together and this career together. And we'll weather this storm. Absolutely. There's no, no question in my mind. There's no question in my mind. All I ever wanted in my life was was warriors that surrounded me, and I, by God, know you are one. I appreciate and, uh, I, I told him one of the first times we talked, I was like, man, when I first met you, I felt like I knew you for years. And then I realized that that maybe I do believe in past lives and maybe we did bathe in the blood of our enemies together at some point. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, um, but man, I encourage everybody w- watching to, to don't fall victim to being a victim, okay? Control the controllables. Do what you can do. Be who you want to be around. Be the person that you want to attract to you. Correct? Absolutely. 100%. you have any parting words for everybody? Man, so with with that being said, that, I mean, you just nailed it. So it's not where you want to be. It's who you want to be, right? <laughs> so... It took me, you know, 30 some what years to get that. So growing up where I grew up, if somebody would have told me I'd be sitting here doing this show and doing all the things that we're doing together, I'd have bet everything against it, right? But then at some point, I just knew there was something more. Like there was something greater inside. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't for a long time, it was what can I have? You know, I want to I want to be somewhere in life. I want to hit a certain level. And then a few years ago, or maybe not even a few years ago, it was who do I have to become to get there? Yep. And then it hit where that's a never ending journey. That's it. So now it's like how how like how far, how fast can I push it? Yeah. And you know, I think as people get that wrapped around their brains, especially in, in, in times like this, man, there's always something you could do, you know, like, like we talk about being all in, mm-hmm. you know, so if I absolutely cannot go do any business, what, what, there's still something I could do. That's right. I could be home with my family, my kids, putting time into them because okay. th- everything's temporary. So this bad time is temporary. So if I'm all in with my family, then they're not going to be so devastated when I leave for three weeks to go and make it happen when the economy gets up. You know, so I, I think that's what people need to understand is who who do you want to be? You know, you that want the best marriage? Vital. Who do you want? To, who do you have to become to have the best marriage? That's right. You want the, you know, a, a growing business? Who do you have to become to have that growing business? Man, that who is 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 the key, and it's it took me a lot longer than you um, to figure that out. I would set my goals on what I wanted to accomplish, but I can tell you this: every time I hit them or missed them, I never felt any different. It was never fulfilling. Right. Pay a house off, not fulfilling. Right. Hey, kudos to me. I didn't feel any different, and so I had to change to use that creative ability that's inside of every single person to determine, man, who do I want to be? Man, I want to become a friend a friend would want to have. Mm -hmm. I want to be, this is who I want to be. And you set your accomplishments as milestones along the way, right? And you got to set them to make you uncomfortable enough to change. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's what the achieving is good for. You know, like this time where we talk about this, so like a lot of people need everything to be smooth so they could perform. Huh. And and not that it's performance based because we know um, we're, it's not about, it's about who we are, not right. what you perform with. But with that being said, we still have to do things. And then certain people, and I feel like I'm one of those people, I thrive in the chaos, in the war, in mm-hmm. the battle it's where I'm my best at, Mm -hmm. you know? So if, if somebody's uncomfortable with that, use that, get, get uncomfortable, embrace that, that suck because it sucks. But when you do that, 
man, you're going to come out on the other side smoking. That's right. I mean, that's just incredible, you know. Um, and I don't know how long we have left, but before we do close, I just want to thank you for having me on here. Yeah. And then, two, you know, when we talk about who we want to be and you talk about, you know, surrounding yourself with those people, mm -hmm. uh, the first time I met you, I knew, I knew right away, I said, that, you know, I won't. I want to be friends with this guy. Like he's someone that I need in my corner, in my circle. <laughs> and after speaking with you a couple times on the phone, we speak probably at least once a week now, mm -hmm. you know? And again, to think how that progressed from not even knowing each other for forever, right? you know, in the short months now, here we are, right? you know, speaking every week as friends. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've changed so much because of that. So I appreciate that. I just want to yeah, put that Yeah, me too. Out there. Hey, when we get on the phone, make no mistake, you say things and I'm like, oh, crap, I got to <laughs> – man, it challenges me. Yeah. But that's what – that's what – that's how relationships are designed. There's things that he's so good at and, and, and he thinks he's learning from me and I'm sitting here taking notes, <laughs> you know. Um, it, it's – that's that's what relationships are. That's how we all are. But you got to be vulnerable enough to be open enough. It's great power and vulnerability. Read read Brene Brown's book. Um, that's an amazing book. There's great power and vulnerability. And and if you're open enough to see the areas of your life, because someone else's success in an area of their life shines a light on the deficit in our own life, right? And you go, oh whoa yeah man i'm glad i'm glad i'm glad i had that interaction i'm glad i'm glad that we we were open like that and i i heard that because that will help me with my son with my daughter with my wife with my business partners with my best friends with you see what i'm saying yeah absolutely it's so key it's so key and as a rising tide rises it raises all the ships right all the ships and uh, and we're all in this together as a world, as a, as a world community, we're in this deal together. And it's it's way past time that we start being humankind, both human and kind. Yep. Right? 100%. Man. And when you, when you become well acquainted with the deficits in your life, when you're vulnerable enough to see that you don't have it all together, that there's areas to grow and learn nonstop, when, when you see that, it gives you a level of humility to deal with other people and what they're going through and to understand them. Everybody wants to be heard, they want to be understood, and they want to be validated. So, man, I appreciate you. Thank you for being on here. Appreciate I know you, we're not man. supposed to touch, so we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll sanitize in a second. Um, but uh, he, he, he dry coughed a minute ago and I was like, great. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, and we're not making light of the situation. No. You got to laugh or you'll cry, right? So we're not making light of it. Stay safe. Stay safe out there. Man, love your family. Love yourself. You can only love those around you to the depth you've learned to love yourself. And uh, I think that was also written in that book we were talking about, Love Your Neighbor as Yourself. It's an old book. It's an old book. It's an old book. A bunch of old old books all put together i think like 66 of them or something I don't something know. like that yeah. something like that <laughs> but uh but anyway we appreciate you guys this is jacob gaspard special guest on the sales wolf podcast i'm your host joseph caldwell and we are the sales wolves oh! Oh!